Good evening and welcome to evening prayer. Uh, I just uh, finished hearing the bells of St. Peter toll for six o'clock and uh, it's been a nice way to at least start the Facebook Live and then allow to listen to the bells and when they finish then begin with our evening prayer as the bells of St. Peter and our bell tonight as well as the bells throughout the world cause a, or call us to an intentional time of prayer and community. And I'm grateful that you are participating in this this evening. Uh, my announcements are brief. We have had several of these thus far, so I trust that you have the bulletin in front of you, are familiar with the order of service, and your responses will be the bold of tonight uh, as we begin our evening prayer. I welcome all of you into this community and I give thanks for the ways that you are sharing a part of this community with others. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praise, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. A reading of, from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson, our first lesson tonight comes from the 10th chapter of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise child makes a glad father, but a foolish child is a mother's grief. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. A child who gathers in summer is prudent, but a child who sleeps in harvest brings shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, and deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call 
your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson comes from Philippians chapter 4. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of well, of well fed and going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you alone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Author Thomas Merton once said that praise is cheap, and it seems as if these words remain true in this day. We give praise to so many different things in our life that our praise to God may seem at times cheap. Sometimes we praise God by talking so much that our words become hollow. Other times we praise God as a heavenly Santa Claus who gives us what we want. We also sometimes treat God as a street vendor with whom we can bargain. I will worship and give you praise if you will do this thing for me. As the bargainer, we may even decide to keep shopping until something better may come along. So how then do we begin to claim 145 of the Psalms as our own, the one that we read tonight, when it commits us to the voice of our praise to God? In the Psalter, Psalm 145 serves two functions to get us better understanding of praise. Psalm 145 is the final Psalm of David, as his Psalms, as you can check, go from Psalm 138 through Psalm 145. And it is the first Psalm of praise in a series that ends the Psalter, from Psalms 145 through 150. While Psalm 145 belongs to David and expresses David's personal commitment to worship God, this psalm is not primarily about an individual's praise, but it has a universal scope to it that calls for the whole creation to praise God's name forever and ever. Two elements hint at Psalm 145's intended universal with the first of these is its acrostic structure which means that each line is arranged sequentially by the letter of the alphabet. So using our English lettering as an example, the first line of Psalm 145 would begin with the letter A, and then the second line would begin with the letter B, and so on and so forth. Thus, the entire alphabet in Psalm 145 is marshaled in praise of God. In addition to this acrostic, this very pattern structure of praise, the psalmist indicates his broad scope of intended praise through four commitments to worship in our psalm. The first commitment made in verses 1 through 2 is the individual, I will extol you, my God and King. Verse 4 expresses this intergenerational commitment to praise from one generation to another. And verse 10 expresses two communal commitments to our praise. You should know that this psalm tonight is the psalm for this Sunday's worship service, so by being here tonight for our evening prayer, we get a little ahead of the others in preparation for our worship on this Sunday. Like Psalm 103 and so many others, Psalm 145, verse 8, borrows language 
from God's self-revelation, as expressed in Exodus chapter 34. In that, that we learn that God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. So rather than expressing this divine totality, such as the nation of Israel, this passage seems to indicate that the psalm refers to all of humanity and all of creation. Psalm 145 is this robust praise of worship that the individual, that the community of Lutheran Moral Church and Academy, this whole nation, this world is to praise God for God's goodness and God's greatness. We are to participate in praise as we do tonight in this evening prayer, yet we know that our praise is not as full and robust as we would like. But within that tension, the the tension that we carry in our own lives of faith, the Psalms provide a glimpse of hope as they move us from this generalized hollow praise of God to recall those specific and meaningful accounts of God's goodness in your life and mine. Think tonight in your many losses and needs. Think back to the times in which that you have been blessed by God, that God's goodness has permeated your life. These moments remind us of God's ongoing tenderness for us, the weak, the needy, the old, the young, the poor, the rich, and they remind us once again of the best news possible of God's goodness. So tonight we are reminded of our call to continue to invest in and proclaim the ongoing praise of God with whose selfless giving is revealed daily to us in each blessing of creation. And thanks be to God. Amen. We arrive at uh, one of my favorite parts of our evening prayer, has been our tradition, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. When we first began evening prayer, it was something that I had read to you, but I have found a much deeper meaning as it is Mark Bold that it is something that we will be singing slash reading with one another. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and our offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life and your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of your saints entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect 
and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. We now come to the moment of our evening prayer in which which we offer our prayer intentions. I also offer the names of the prayers uh, that are on our prayer list, including our military servicemen and women. We pray as a community of faith tonight for Kathy and Bob, for Pastor David Mumford, for Judy and Robert, for Juliet, for Laura Beth, Dorothy, Suzanne, Shirley, Mike, Sutton, David, Cheryl, Jessica, Linda, Bill, and Grace. We pray for Michael and Andrew, Matthew, Stephen, and Ben. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, our preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all the joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.